been hot. Uh, I'll tell you what it our, is later. Our first, <laughs> our first guest is uh, is on the line. He is the, he just wrapped up his second 250 East Supercross Championship in a hell of a ride. Brought to you by Vortex Racing. It's Geico Honda's Chase Sexton. Chase, thank you for coming on and congratulations, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Uh, I have so many questions. I don't know where to start. Uh, do you want to start with? Uh, um, let's start with this. Listen, Shane was trying to jack with you in, in the race a little bit, slowing down and and letting you by and everything else. And I just I love the fact that you were like, okay, cool, let's play this game. Try to catch me, and you took off. That was a mm. that was awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, it was fine. Like, I kind of went so like the restart. Obviously, I got I was behind, and I'm like, well, I knew he was he wasn't gonna just gonna let, let me fall in the whole race, which I kind of expected. So. Right. I was like, the first time I got around him, I'm like, he kind of has probably a little bit too much energy. So I rode a couple laps in front of him, and he got close to me. And I'm like, I'm not going to let him just clean me out. And yeah. then, so I let him by. He started playing those games. And then um, he mi- he made his mistakes and missed the rhythm section. And I probably gapped him a second. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, this is it. I got to drop the hammer and, like, try and pull away, which ended up working. And then once I started pulling a gap, I'm I was like, yeah, this is. Uh, I, at that point, I'm like, yeah, I think I have this thing. So yeah, no, it was good. I just it was the games are kind of weird. Like, I think he wanted the guys to catch us, so there was a chance yeah. of like Mac and those guys getting in involved. But I was like, I can't let those guys catch us, and that's going to be a no a mess. So yeah, I think he was trying to do the Tomac bunching thing, right? That that Eli yeah, tried. Yeah, but- yeah, yeah. But he ended up missing that rhythm section. That's what gave him the gap to be able to. Because if he was close enough to me, he was going to obviously try and hit me. So yeah. I had to have somewhat of a gap. And there was a lot of corners out there that were very vulnerable, vulnerable to, <laughs> I guess, take somebody out. So Yeah, I, I thought that was awesome. You were just like, all right, catch me if you can. See you later. I got this thing. I don't need to ride safe. I can just, you know, take off and win it. It was it was quite a statement ride. And, and let's face it, like, you know, last year was gifted to you a little bit with Austin's yep. injury. But this year, man – yeah, you 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 rose to the occasion. You were the best guy, and uh, that that's last race I think just put a total stamp on it. So that had to feel good for you after last year's title. Yeah, I mean, honestly, going into like last, yesterday's race, like I was looking into those East West shootouts like all year before even the coronavirus thing happened. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to win one of those races and thinking we we're going to have two, and then it only ended up having one. So I wanted to win at least. I wanted to win one of those races because it's my last year on a 250 yeah and i'm only racing half the field for most of the season so i wanted to go out there and race everybody and try and win because i think that's it's a statement for me to go out and mm-hmm. win the last race and kind of move on and kind of get my head into a new class and know that i won the last race that i was in yeah. against everybody so that for me i was going into yesterday wanting to win the race like obviously big picture was championship but i wanted i really wanted to win and beat the rest of the guys there. So yeah. that was kind of my whole mindset going into yesterday. Well, it showed, man. It was it was impressive. So that was awesome. Um, the Nichols thing. Uh, initially, I was like, oh, Sexton, what are you doing? Like, you you know, you don't need to do that. You t- take third in the heat. Uh, it was a little bit, I thought, a little bit ill-advised. But then I kind of saw some photos and watched it again, and Colt looks really over. Like, he moves over a little bit. Skip and I here in the studio were disagreeing a little bit on it. But what's your take of that whole incident? Yeah, so like, man, I got it. Well, I had a terrible start in the heat race, so I was coming from pretty far back. I'm like, all I was thinking was gate pick, like, yeah, because everyone comes together, and I'm gonna have. I get second. That's depends if we have the faster heat heat race or not, but that could potentially be fourth gate pick. And if I got third, that's sixth gate pick. And with that start, you had to have an inside gate to have a chance at getting a good start. I felt like so, and it was the safest bet for me. So my whole mindset was just trying to pass as many people as possible and get to a a good gate position. And honestly, I, like three laps ago, I'm like, I could probably win this thing as long as <laughs> I wasn't going to get taken out by Shane. Because I I feel like I reeled those reeled those guys in from a ways back. Yeah, you did. You and did. I I was like, man, I could possibly win this thing. And I I made a dumb move the lap before that. I jumped inside the same place that I landed on him, and like kind of tried to block him. But it was kind of like a half pass. Like mm-hmm. I missed the triple, lost a whole bunch of ground, and I had to catch him again. Got to the back, I'm like, all right, this lap I'm passing him right here. And I had the thing set up from the – I was pretty much next to him or a little bit behind him. And he was, like, pretty far left, so I'm like, he's not going to jump to the inside. Like, he's going to go outside. I'm going to jump to the inside. 
And then when he doubled, and I was already committed to the triple, he looked over and started moving over, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah. But I thought I had enough clear. But I didn't think I was actually going to land on him, and I clipped his handlebar, and, and on that, I was Dude, lucky to get away with yeah. that. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, uh, I actually almost saved it, besides the tough blocks were there. So I ran into the tough blocks. But for me, it ended up good because I got second which was my goal. I wanted to get as many positions, but I, I texted Colt and I like, said I was sorry because, like, I mean, I think he thought, like, he definitely thought he made a mistake too, but I think it was it was a race. Yeah. Oh, you there? Oh, we might have lost him. Oh, yeah, we lost him. See if we can get him back. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, kind of what he was saying about the the um, the gate pick, I, that, that to me, I'm like saying, hey, it's okay. I don't need to take this chance. That's if that's me. Yeah, I you know that was gonna be one of the things I was gonna ask. You know how many how many gates how many good gates were on that starting line in your mind? <laughs> Clearly there was four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. In his mind. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Um, we'll get him back here. Chase Sexton brought to you by Vortex Racing, of course. Uh, email Kyle at vortexracing.com for a hell of a deal from the folks at Vortex. Sprockets used by Chad Reed and James Stewart. I mean that's that's pretty good right there, right? So um, all right, let's get him back on here. Uh. Hey Chase, right. you're you're back. No worries. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I must have had my I had my phone on my on my uh, yeah. face. I must have hung up on an accident. But no worries. No, I'm. Where'd you guys? Where'd you guys? Uh, uh, no, yeah, we heard you saying you texted you texted Colt uh, after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I texted him and said like I'm sorry, man. Like I didn't didn't mean to make that that move, and like I I didn't mean to land on him. So I texted him and said sorry, but I think he kind of agreed. Like it was a racing incident. And I think he misjudged like where I was at and I misjudged how much or how much room I actually had so yeah I felt bad yeah. but at the same time I thought I needed that position to get a better gate pick with that start and it was critical because that start could have really changed the changed a lot so yeah I, uh yeah I made the move and I it was a racing incident and, but at, yeah. at hindsight it's always 2020 but at the at the moment I thought I was making the right decision hi this hey this is Skip Jackson but yep. at at did I got a question? When you triple in on the inside, were you gonna make the triple, or were you gonna roll double or double in after that? Double in after that. So the lap before, I kind of did what I was trying to do was I was trying to just stop him before the corner or before the triple, and kind of like just put my wheel in there. Yep. But it ended up I didn't get it the first the first time. It would have been really dirty if I would have tried it because I would have basically just like <laughs> sawed his front end off. So the second time, I felt like I was close enough to do it. So I made. I obviously went for it, but he ended up jumping to the inside, and at that point I was like, uh-oh, this ain't good. So I expected him to go outside so I could just kind of block his line for the triple and then go double, but obviously it didn't work out that way. And I really didn't – I didn't know I was going to land on him until I actually clipped him because it looked – for a second it looked like it wasn't going to be that close, and then he started moving over even more, and then by that time I landed right on his hand. So Yeah, I definitely think it was a racing incident. Uh, you know, and to me you're more, more to blame than, than Colt, but – no, I do. I disagree. I know you do. I know I you know. do. I know. But well, I do look like I haven't seen a rider like Colt. Like he know Colt knows the line. Like hey, there's a triple here that guys that I'm not doing that yeah. other guys are doing, and I do wonder why Colt would look over so far and move so far. That was weird. I I don't think he realized he was tripling in. Yeah, I mean maybe. Maybe yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean I guess I I don't know. I mean, for me I did I. I did the exact same thing the lap before, and he saw me. So I right. think yeah. – I mean, I have to believe that he went to block me, but I don't know if he thought I was close <laughs> or not as close. Yeah. I think like, – from what he said, he didn't think I was that close. So for him, I think he just thought he was going to cut me off and I wasn't going to be able to triple. So I guess that's kind of where he was coming from, but I thought I was close enough where I was kind of next to him. But, yeah. I mean – yeah, I don't. I don't racing. I didn't. Yeah. I was just trying to make a pass, and obviously, like I really like Colt, and I think he's a good guy, and he wouldn't. I didn't think. I he didn't do it. I don't think on purpose. No, either. So, yeah, because like it's kind of yeah. it's it's kind of a. a he knows. Oh, did we lose him again? Smell you. Oh. Oh yeah, we did. Oh, that's weird. No, right, get him back on. Technology. Kind of like yeah. Metro PCS or something. <laughs> you know, times are tough. <laughs> Not that tough. He just won. Yeah, good point. Well, yeah. 
she hasn't got the hasn't got the. You know who yet. else? You know who else won their two fifty title before they went up to the four fifties? Who's that? Adam. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he also threw away one though in Vegas one time. It's not. What ma- I mean, he ended on a high note. though, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, but uh, but this is Supercross, right? So I don't know if you can compare them. Uh, Chase, you're back. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what uh, I'm doing. I don't, I don't know. Who what's knows? Going on. I actually I know where you are right now. Maybe it's up in that weird area, Chase, where you know where you got weird <laughs> signals. Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's an odd it's an odd area where you're at right now. Um, yeah. Hey, yeah. Um, no, I don't. I think Colt. Look, Colt. Even if Colt's like, oh my God, I gotta take Sexton out because uh, he, could, uh, you know, I want to help my teammate. He's not doing it that way because that could that could you know that seriously hurt Colt. Like you know, nobody. Yeah, he's not gonna he's no. not gonna land it on for a no. for a teammate. I, no. Like I talked to him. I, I even like before the race and stuff. I said like good luck. Like I talked to him and like he's cool. Like he's not one of those guys that's gonna play that that card. I don't no think, way. I, so. I, I I'm with you. I, I don't think – I mean, no one wants to get landed on. I don't care who it is. Like, you're not going to go get landed no, on for a no. teammate. So. Um, hey, what happened on that first start? Like, oh, my God, what what went wrong on the uh, – my, the... my whole shot device came off. When I dumped, when I popped the clutch, my whole shot device came straight up. And I, oh. we, so, I was like, from there, I'm like, oh, my God, are you serious? Dude, <laughs> Dude I actually got – like, I made a lot of passes, by the way. Like, yep. everyone was like, oh, the restart, restart. But I was already in – I was ready to pass for fourth. Like, I'm – Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was in the. I had two teammates in front of me, and like I was ready to. I guess get mm-hmm. to. I think I could have got to at least second. Yeah. And I really felt like I was, like no. I felt like I was the fastest one yesterday. So yeah, yeah. Be, I mean, obviously, Fernandez is fast, but he was behind me. So I felt like I was the fastest one to catch those guys. And yeah, I mean, the restart obviously played in my favor, but at the same time, I feel like I was kind of bummed. I thought they were going to do a staggered start, and I was kind of happy about it. But okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want. I, I was like. I mean, I I can make it work from here. So you were when they did the when they did the restart. I'm like, this is another start. I could get possibly in a car and or a pile up or something like that. So I wanted to stagger start and just go from where yeah, we were. Yeah. But oh they yeah, had the full I think you were one lap away from that from the from the uh, from the stagger. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? Uh, so I kind of heard some rumblings a little. Like I don't. I asked Dylan in the press conference that you didn't show up for. By the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, AMA and stuff were handing out the the one plate that like our team truck. Yeah. And like I didn't get the. We've been struggling with this whole press conference thing since I got here. I think I almost, I almost missed the first one because <laughs> we just didn't know what time it was. Yeah, so yeah. it's my bad. Yeah, I, it's we were fine. doing like a whole bunch of stuff with the team. So yeah, it was my bad. I'm just giving you shit. I, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> Save it for the Pulp Mech Show. It's even better. I've got the scoops. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I asked Dylan about this. There was an inside gate on the main event, and I cannot figure out why nobody took it, what was going on down there, and I kind of heard some stuff that Shane took your gate. Like, what what happened? So, yeah, I mean, like, I think everyone kind of saw, like, Star and those guys are playing games with me all day. In, in practice, yeah, they or were doing it in practice. practice, yep. And so, like, we had these little flags, like, right. this is supposed to be what we pick our gates with, and I went and picked my gate, and we started rolling our bikes up, and I'm sitting there. Shane's trying to roll his bike in my game. I'm like, what are you doing? And he, I guess he just thought he's I, he, I went inside of him, one gate inside of him, and then he went, I guess, took my gate. So they were arguing about that, the AMA guys, but I don't know. They, I think he, they, that's what they planned on doing because I had, a, I was after him picking, so I just went right inside of him, and it was a pretty good rut. So okay. he just saw me pick that, and I guess. I don't know how it's legal, because those things are supposed to be what we pick our gates. Yeah, with. you have the flags. So, that's it. You got to be set in your. The flag was in the ground, and he picked his gate, and then yeah. So he, I was literally like scrubbing my gate off with a brush, and he's rolling his bike, and I'm like, "What are you doing?" And then they're like all arguing. So I'm, I was like, "Whatever." I got a gate. I saw this other gate that I liked that was even farther inside. I'm like, yeah. "I'll just take that. I don't really care." So. Okay, and then there was a gate open. I, I don't know if you noticed that. So the, the gate open, I thought they were playing, like, I thought Star was, like, playing games or something because, like, I thought, like, all of a sudden someone's going to come in there and take the gate. But, no, the gate was open. I'm like, oh, sweet. I have some. I have a little more room. I had Kyle Peters. Yeah. It went, it went Christian, me, gate open, and then Kyle, and then Shane. So I had two uh, Hondas on, the, on yeah. both sides of me, and I was like, yeah, I mean, I had a pretty good gate. I felt like I was – I had I like my chances at a good start besides for the first one when my whole shot device came off. So I I do not understand why that yeah that gate didn't go. I don't know what was going on. And of course, Star protested your team for fuel. So their their shit show continues over there. Uh, yeah, I, I I mean I'm sure you'll be fine. 
you guys all use the same fuel, you know, but does that stress you yeah. out? I mean, like, it doesn't stress me out because I feel like we we run fuel off the shelf. Like, we run Pro 6 VP. Like, yeah. everyone runs, I think Star runs that same gas. So, yeah. I don't know. Like, after, like, the whole day, like, I felt like the main event, I won I won the race. Yeah. Like, yeah. I pulled away from Shane. I won, I felt like fair and square, like, like what else can they throw at me? And then I hear their protest, and like, are you kidding me? I was at the AMA trailer, like, just yelling at the star guys. I'm like, what do you guys do? Like, oh, you, we run the same gas. Like, yeah. Yeah. I just, I didn't get it. And I just, we've had problems with the team before. And I just was like, I, I yeah. don't know. I just was kind of frustrated. But at the end of the day, I just, I was happy I won. And yeah, yeah I, I don't think, I don't think anything will come over, come by it. But Chris, you got a question? Chase, it's uh, Chris Betts. Oh yeah. What's, What's up, up, man? Dude? How are you? Congrats. Thank you, man. Hey, um, Chase, all he keeps talking about is AC though, all show. So like please, <laughs> yeah, this is getting a little much. No, I'm I'm on <laughs> team Chase. Bro, that's congrats on uh on winning, but your championship cap your championship check's gonna cash and his isn't, so you win. You're good. <laughs> You're dialed. Yeah, I mean I just like I really like I don't just the team they try and play these games and it's like yeah. I just feel like they don't it's just hard, harder for me to like respect people that don't respect you. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I feel like I just, they don't respect people. And like, I feel like if I was racing even Austin or like PC, like any of the other teams, they don't play those games and it's just going out there and racing and the best man wins. But when they're playing, I don't care. Like the games in the track, whatever, like it doesn't really bother me. Like practice, yeah. like you can bump me off the track how many times you want. Like I'm still going to do my thing and ride my lap. So I don't know. I just, it's whatever. I, the race is over and, I ended up winning, so I, I was, I'm uh, I'm happy with that. I was gonna Move ask on. I was gonna ask you about the practice thing, <laughs> like if that bothers you or not. You said it didn't. I, I don't like it. I think it's bullshit. Like, listen, the gate drops. That's the race, and and do you know race aggressively, race hard, and go for this championship. But practice games, I think that's bullshit. I've been a part of that on teams, like with KTM when I was with KTM and Langston was going for it, and Brownie would wait and pull off in front of. I think that's just bullshit. Hey, hey. It is. Hey, I, I think it is. Hey, jerk well. offs. You've had fucking nine rounds to do something, and now you're going to wait to practice in the final round? Yeah. Like, that, that, that's, that's the attitude to that's me. That's the shit you got to do, though, when you can't beat someone. You got to get, like, I know, just, shady I, I just, and creative. I just think it's not, it's, it's bullshit. Totally bullshit, but, like, yeah. hey, it's a compliment. Like, they don't think they can beat you straight up, so they're going to try and uh, get. Just, I mean, I guess. It just, it, bottom yeah. line, the AMA, the AMA needs to control it. Yeah. It's, it. it's, well, it's on them. Yeah. You know, you, all Chase can do is go out there and kick their ass like you did. Right. Well, yeah, you? and. At, and for me, like, like you said, like it's like a compliment. Like when they're when you're messing with somebody like that, like that's when you feel like you can't. Like that's that's their last resort. Like they know that I they ha I have the upper edge, and that's when they have to like play those games. So for me, I was, I mean, it's annoying, but yeah. At the same time, like if they're doing that, they're way more worried about me than I am about them. So yeah. And sure. I was just like, he bumped me off, tried bump me off the track. I'm like, and he's getting my, he's blocking my fast laps. I'm just, yeah, yeah, like yeah. whatever. I just, I, I mean, like last year, like Dylan going out and he won the race. Obviously, it was unfortunate that Adam fell, but like, you just gotta go out and win the race. And yeah. Like, hopefully, like something happens. Like, it's just, yeah. No, I don't know. It's just, I, it's whatever. I was almost wondering in the heat race if they were trying to jack with you a little bit. That's how fast you caught them. I was almost like, what's going on here? Like, what's happening? Because you caught them yeah. so fast, I was like, mm, "Are we going to see some shenanigans?" You know. Yeah. So. I the heat race. I I'm. It's two years in a row. I actually felt better in the that, last year at Vegas. I felt so good in the heat race, and then this year I felt really good again. Like that's probably one of the best races I feel like I've had, like feeling wise on the bike. And I caught them guys, but I was like, I don't know. Like I have to pass one of them at least <laughs> to get a better game pick, but. I, I really do trust Colt, and I knew yeah. that he was going to be respectful about it. Um, obviously, Shane I was a little skeptical about, so I just had to I had to really pick and choose where I was going to pass, and I felt like where I was trying to pass that was mm -hmm. the safest for me, trying to at least block so he couldn't jump it and then trying to block the next inside because I really felt like that track had – like they built it on purpose for, like, takeouts. I feel like there were so many <laughs> open corners. Like, yeah. Uh, it, it was just crazy. The main event, like, the corner after the finish line, like, I was just waiting to hear the Yamaha revved up and just, just coming at my phone. Yeah, coming in like, hot uh, off the whoops, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, no, it's just, it's all right. I, I really did trust Colt, though, and, like, right. that's why I was so bummed about, about what went down because I didn't 
obviously me, land a mean on or or land a mean or mean, mean to land, land on him. Yeah. So I was just yeah, I was bummed and they were obviously mad about it, but I at the end, I didn't mean to do it. So it was a racing incident. We got a couple calls for you, uh, Chase here. Uh, brought to you by Vortex Racing, the 250 Supercross East Champion for second year in a row. Uh, James, what's going on? Uh, you want to talk to Chase Sexton? Yeah. First off, Chase, congrats. Uh, I'm born and raised in Illinois, so it's awesome seeing an Illinois kid, you know, you know, making the championship and doing what you're doing, so it's awesome to see. Uh, I was kind of curious, you know, you're making the jump to 450s, and I think other riders have said, you know, 250s is, you know, bonkers, everybody racing crazy. How do you adjust your racecraft to go immediately to a 450, or do you just kind of hop in and see how it goes and then feel it out? Yeah, so the two, I, I say the 250 class is almost like a, like it's just so chaotic. There's these got like everyone's just going for each other, and I just we're just I are young kids. Most of them are young kids. Yep. Trying to just I don't know, just go for it. And the 450 class, I feel like a lot of it's a lot more maturity, and most of them are older, so they just I think there's a lot more respect too in the 450 class. Like everyone's experienced, everyone's more. Um, I guess just, yeah, yeah, more experience. So for me, I'm just going in. I'm just going to go out there and race how I normally race. I feel like for me, I'm not usually the crazy guy. Like I'm not out there going gunning for people. And I feel like I ride pretty smooth. So I feel like I should fit in the 450 class. But, again, I'm, it's going to be a learning curve. I'm going in to outdoors with not much riding on the 450. So going to have to get some riding in. But for me, just going out there and learning and trying to race with these guys is the 450 guys are fast, and there's a reason that, um, like, those guys are just good. So I'm going to have to go out there and learn and uh, just take it race by race. There's not really a game plan at, at this point just to go out there and do my best. And I have a great teammate, Ken, so to learn from him and, uh, yeah, just overall learn every weekend. Thanks, James. Thanks for the call. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, appreciate it. Next up for Chase Sexton is Jake. Jake, what's going on? Uh, you want to talk to Chase Sexton? Hey, Chase, uh, first of all, like my last caller, uh, congratulations on the championship. Uh, I guess my question is really the, the setting and the feeling that you found in the off season versus what you needed to change for, for SLC. Like, obviously, you came in and you, you did pretty good early in the in the East Series. So um, what was it, or if anything, was there needed to be changed on the bike or as far as your riding that needed to be done for, for Salt Lake? And then... Um, kind of what's going through your mind when, when someone's jacking with you during the race or during during practice? I mean, I guess you kind of said you're just really doing your own laps, but, I mean, is, how hard is it to kind of to put the thing away and zip the pants up and not want to jack with the guy back, right? Yeah, I appreciate that, but um, I appreciate you saying good job on the championship. But it was uh, – what was the first question? It was uh, – um, Your bike from Alt- – from your bike set up oh, and stuff from Florida so, to Salt Lake. Yeah, so – I always like I knew coming in like Shane's gonna be good. This he's won here three times in a row or something like that. So I knew coming out and we had a break. He's always good at the first couple of races. So for me, I knew I was gonna have my work cut out for me. And I I had been struggling like I did a lot of like trial and error testing throughout the break, the uh, COVID break, just trying to find some front end traction because I didn't feel like my front end was really planted. But we were racing tacky tracks, so I didn't really have a problem because we had rots to bank off of but so i was testing and knew i had to find something for me to come and race this race but ended up just going back to my dallas setup just to try and go race and the first race was okay for me uh i got second followed shane the whole race which i was not very happy about um and then the second race lost the front first lap which i was really upset because that's why i've been chasing for the whole year basically yeah. so i <laughs> the team and I after that race like we we put a lot of work in like I rode every week I was here I rode or there I rode four times and for the first three weeks or, or first two weeks we were there we were testing forks shocks like just trying to get something that was um a little more stable and a little more uh you could just predict it easier so I was testing and we put a lot of hard work and from I didn't change my bike from that mud race throughout so we did all that work and we found a setting with the fork that i was really comfortable with and right away you could see it just was way more stable and way more predictable for me and um ended up not changing it after that we changed this thing in the shock for the whoops and did that fork and i think it changed a lot my riding style my confidence and 
from there on I didn't uh, lose a race. So I was really that's why I was really stoked with the team. Like they really put a lot out there for me and put a lot of work in for this trip to go well. And I was really stoked with that and just the effort that they, everyone put in for to win this championship was cool. So I I put a we put a lot of time and effort into testing and I think it paid off. I felt super comfortable the last three races on my bike and how, I was really happy with how they did. How about that flying horse ranch deal? I went out there on Friday. It was amazing. Jeez. Chase, yeah. It was... So I only rode there one time. So oh, okay. I only rode there the first day I got to Salt Lake and it was cool. It was a super cool track. Yeah. But it wasn't a super cross track. No, so no. I was trying to find a, I actually started riding. We rode that, it's in Thule. It's where the old national was. Yeah. The Miller Motorsports Park. I rode yep. there a lot and it was really slick and realistic to the race. So, it was Probably. ideal testing for me, and then right. we ended up going to Bracken Halls for two days um, oh, okay. in the off week, which was nice too. So, right. yeah, I mean, it was. And then to answer your second question, I was um, Shane messing with me was again. It was kind of like a compliment because I knew he was worried. I knew that they had to try everything, or it was like a last ditch effort to get in my head. Which I, I feel like I'm pretty mentally sound and um, confident what I'm capable of, of. Or so I was not too worried about it. I just it is frustrating when you have a guy ruining your fast laps. For me, I get really heated uh, pretty easily. So I was just trying to keep calm and just know that uh, it didn't matter until the race. So I was just, uh, yeah, trying to be patient and trying to be the more mature rider. And uh, I think that's it, it paid off. So thanks for, the, uh, thanks for the call, Jake. Thank you, man. Cool. Thank thanks. you. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Chase, uh, it's Chris again. What was the plan if you didn't gap Shane? Like, what were you going to do? Like, if he was just all over you and, like, trying to <laughs> just demolish you? So, <laughs> there was really no other plan. There was one plan, and that was, like, the second time he let me go by, I was like, this is, like, I got to win this race. Like, because the, there was no – at that point, the guys behind us were too close to, like, just ride behind him because he was – we were going so slow. Like, I was – we almost came to a stop in the one corner. I'm like – yeah. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to cut it. So I either was going <laughs> to, like, pull away or he was going to take me out. So yeah. there was not there was not much of another game plan. I had to either win or uh, wow. he was going to try and saw my front end off. You could just, like, literally fall right behind him, and if he yeah. stops, you stop on the track. <laughs> and that would have been hilarious. That would have been great. I know, but then we would have had guys going by us, and then yeah. I just didn't want to be in that chaos. I knew, like, I was – like I said, like after all that testing we did, like I was really confident in my speed and like my ability to like put down fast laps and race laps consistently. So I just said after I had to drop the hammer and try and once I got like a two second gap, I was pretty comfortable and where he couldn't, there was no chance for him to um, get inside me. So then after that, I kind of started clicking off my laps and then we kind of got into lappers, but that race was nice because we didn't lap nearly as many people. Yeah, and we could race. I could pretty much ride my my own race the whole time. So I was pretty comfortable after we got, like I say, a two second lead, and I actually had a lot of fun on that track. It was, it was dry, but again, I was really blown away with how good the team worked with me this whole time, and I was super comfortable on my bike and uh, really happy with how it went. So I was actually having a lot of fun, and just the whoops were gnarly, which was yeah. helping me. And um, no, it was good. How uh, how's it been working with Stu? Just just a legend, just, just amazing. Uh, I guess it, so. It's out now. Oh, it's um, out. It's out. It's out. I mean, it, it was kind of out. Kenny put that thing on. He his did. Instagram, yes. And that's Ken, when everyone yeah. kind of figured it out. But it's been really good. Like, I was blown away with how down to earth the guy is. Like, right. It's crazy. He's super cool and like, it's it's weird because you don't really. I didn't really expect that out of him because he was like such like a a legend mm -hmm. and like. He could be. He could just not talk to anybody, and I would like be okay with that. He's that's how <laughs> yeah. good he was. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, like he's. I was born like it's like he like reached out and like he was the one that kind of like started the whole conversation, and, um, which was crazy to me. I'm like, right. like why me? Like, but I guess he saw something in me that, um, that he liked. So I started working with him right after like that whole break thing, and went out to his track a few times. And then I rode there probably three weeks in a row, and he came out quite a bit. And then we came to the he went to the Moto Sandbox, worked with me there, and it's just been really good. Like that first race in Salt Lake City, dude, he he was not happy with that. He was, <laughs> I pretty much rode around behind Shane the whole race. Yeah, he's like, dude, that's an opportunity you have to win those races, and 
<laughs> it kind of got me fired up. But um, no, he he's been really good. And just his whole like racecraft thing. Like I think like racing in like that position I had yesterday with Shane trying to hold me up. Like I learned just to be patient, and then when you strike, you got to make it happen. And kind of like when you pass somebody, you got to break him because that mentally gets into their head. And yeah. um, I learned a lot from him. So that I have to give him some credit for that, but. Um, it's been really good, and it's been – I'm awesome. super excited for him to help me on the 450 because I think that's where my true potential is going to come out, and mm-hmm. I think that's where he can help me the most. Chase, say this to Skip again. Did did he give you a, a different perspective or a different way of looking at things, or, you know, what, what made it work for you so well? You know, like, I think him and I have a really similar mindset, like, just the, on racing in general and what our goals are and kind of, like, what we care about is – I think we just matched right away and we have a pretty similar um, liking in golf. So that was a, it kind of helped too. We golf played golf a few times. That's actually where I first met him was on the golf course. That's where I went and talked about like what was going to go down. And Mm -hmm. um, I think we just knew that we had pretty similar ideas on what, uh, what I needed to work on and what um, my goals were. So that's when I kind of knew like this guy's like for real and, I didn't expect it at all. Like he was super down to earth and it's just crazy how simple he lives and like how great he was. And it's just cool to see. And um, it just clicked right off the bat. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that is, that that's is really, really cool. cool. It's, it's great to have him back in the sport a little bit, man. I hate it when he was gone. It's great to have yeah, him. Yeah, he was actually, yeah. he was going to come to Salt Lake city for the, for the last two, but he ended up, I ended up like, dude, it's, it's not, it's right. not worth it. I think it's with the whole coronavirus thing. Like, right. It's just a mess. So, um, he was actually going to come, but I think we'll be seeing him at races here soon. Oh, I hope so. That'd be awesome. That'd good be to good. have him back. Ah, uh, thanks for coming on, Chase. I really appreciate the time. I know you're busy up there, and uh, thank you for the time for the show. Congratulations again. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, thank thanks. you, man. That's uh, that's Chase Sexton, brought to you by VortexRacing.com. So, <laughs> Stu, it's working with Stu. <clears throat> Uh, all right, we're on a commercial break here before we go. Uh, Amber sent me a message. Uh, happy anniversary.